Hi, I'm Lisa Vogt. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I want to show you how to make these adorable little dots. Have you ever wondered how we make these beautiful little dichroic dots that look like they're illuminated from the inside? They're terrific little pieces, accent pieces you can use on a whole wide variety of projects. And they're real easy to make, a lot of fun to make. When I make a couple for a single project, I just go crazy and make a whole bunch so that then I have an assortment to choose from later on when I make a different project. This piece is called On Cloud Nine. It's in my sculptural fused glass video. So you can learn how to make it there. But I also want to show you, you know, some of these little things. There's a whole wide variety of ways you can use these on different things. So I wanted to show you how to make these dots and then maybe you have some ideas of how you want to use them. This is what I'm talking about. Check out these cool little diamondy little dots. Look, I've got all these different shapes. Some of these are kind of abstract. So what we do is cut little squares out of dichroic glass. You make sure the coating is down. Then you put it on a ceramic kiln shelf and you fire it to a full fuse temperature. Now, see how this one, these have like a golden tone and that one has a little bit of a blue cast. That has to do, um, that's a reaction to based on the type of dichroic you use. If you use a dichroic with a golden cast, you get these golden tones. It, this one has kind of a blue green. These kind of have a blue or purple kind of tone. So it's a good idea to use a variety of different types of dichroic when you're making these little dots. Also, if your dichroic has a texture on it, see how this one has, I'll put it back down where you can see it, has a little bit of a texture on the back side. That's because I used a dichroic with a pattern on it with a, a physical texture. This dichroic piece had a pattern to it, so I've got some pattern going on there. So what I'd like to show you first is how to determine if the dichroic coating is up or down, because you want the coating down in order to get this beautiful, lustrous look. Now here are some other random pieces that I have. Look how fun this is, right? So these are, I have this little jar and I use that to contain these things. And when I go ahead and make some of these, I make extra because I never know when or where I'm going to use them. And I always like to have them on hand because they come in handy for a lot of things. So this one has kind of a strange shape because it was probably a little bit bigger than the size I really would do. Have you ever wondered what it would look like if your dichroic was on black? It would look something like that or like this. They generally don't round out as well. You get these oblong shapes, which in some situations, maybe you're making bugs and those would be really cool. You know, but for what I'm doing most of the time, I'm trying to replicate or duplicate something that looks like water droplets. And so usually I prefer the ones that are round like this. Then there are times when these oblong pieces are kind of fun. But then you might wonder, okay, what's it like if the coating is up and the coating is not down? Then your piece would look like this instead of this. Notice how this one has a lot more depth and this one, the shimmer is right on the surface, kind of like a reflection. Whereas this one, you have a lot of depth and the color comes from within. So keep in mind, that's why we want the dichroic coating down. And that's why we want to try to make our little shapes as uniform as possible. So we end up with these nice rounded shapes. So these little dots are really fun to make. So let's go ahead and, and get started. Let me slide this out of the way over here and bring in some glass. So the first thing you want to do is determine whether your coating, your dichroic coating is up or down. So these are clear glass uh, with a dichroic coating on them. And this is a gold tone. So what I did was I cut it in half so we can use this one as an example. So in order to tell if the coating is up, you lift up the glass and you take something like a toothpick and you place it on the glass. If there's a space between the tip of the toothpick and the reflection, that is the non-coated side. So let's turn this over. And now we have the reflection and the toothpick are touching each other. Can you see that? That means that this is the dichroic coating on this side. So I'm going to put these two pieces side by side. Let's check this one. All right, this one, the coating is down. See how the reflection, there's a space between it? Now, I know this is probably hard to see on video, but in person, it's much easier. Okay, look, no space, space. You see that distance between the tip and the reflection? And then here, there's no distance between the tip and the reflection. So this is the coating side up. So we're gonna cut these pieces of glass with the coating down. So let's test this one. All right, that's the coated side. So we're gonna turn it this way, test it again. Okay, that's the non-coated side. Another way to tell is to look at the edge of the glass. If you can see the edge, kind of like, um, you know, you can see the edge of the glass, that shimmer there, 
That's the non-coated side. On the coated side, it's like a mirror and almost like a ref um, infinity pool and the coating goes right to the edge and you don't see the edge of the glass. It's a very small, kind of insignificant thing, but if you're holding the glass in your own hand, it is easier to see. So here we've got the coating. All right, here the coating's up because there's no edge. And then here the coating is down because I can see the edge of the glass. So we want the coating down. Now, if you have a dichroic with a texture, the texture is usually the coated side. So that's super easy. So this is the coated side of these pieces. You just turn them over and you cut on the smooth side anyway. So you cut on this back side and then you're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take these other pieces over here, move them off my shelf. Right here I've got a kiln shelf. And what we're going to do is cut these pieces. First I'm going to double check. Yes, the coating is down. Terrific. Okay. I'm going to take my cutter. I'm going to cut approximately, you know, quarter inch pieces, strips. I'm going to cut the other direction. Now if you had mosaic nippers, you could use those too. Now I'm trying to make these kind of uniform. Some are not going to be uniform. That's okay. That's why if I want 10, I make 20. If I have enough kiln shelf space, I just fill it because then I have plenty of options when I go to make my project and I don't have to go make more. Now I'm going to take my running pliers and gently squeeze them. I'm going to make sure I keep this glass in the correct orientation so the coating is down the entire time. All right. Now I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to put it right on the kiln shelf. Oops, it turned over on me. Okay. Here I'm taking my grossing pliers, going right up to that score line, gently pulling down and adding these little squares to the kiln shelf. Now I'm working on a primed ceramic kiln shelf. This is dichroic on clear. And I cut these pieces approximately, you know, a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch, a little smaller than a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to place them on this kiln shelf. And then they will, when I take this to a full fuse temperature, these will kind of ball up. And because that coating is on the bottom, I'll end up with these beautiful little dots. Now any of these pieces that are unusual in shape, like that one or this one, I'll get a slightly different shape, won't be perfectly round, but that's okay. You know, I've got the glass already cut, so I might as well use it. And, or I've got these pieces already scored, so I might as well use them. And I generally find areas or places where these um, unusual shapes fit in just beautifully. So I don't mind having extra. In fact, I just love having these on hand because then if I'm in, you know, in the throes of an exciting project and it needs a little something, I already have these pieces made. All right, so let's say you want to have some pieces that look like this with a little bit of a texture on the back side. So in that case, you would use a, a dichroic glass with a pattern, with a texture to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to cut these up. We're gonna put the coating down, the um, texture down, run my score line. I'm gonna use my running pliers to break the glass. And because this glass is a little bit thicker, I'm gonna use it to break it sideways as well. <clears throat> now here this is a little bit easier because the texture is the coated side. So as long as we have the texture down, then we know we have these going in the in the correct orientation. I'm gonna go ahead and break this one up. There we go. Put that up, oh, texture up. Let's turn that over. This one I'm just gonna cut into pieces and have some random shapes. Turn it around, make it a little easier. Oh, there we go. All right, now that one's pretty big, so we'll check that out after it comes out of the kiln. And I'm gonna add these extras to the shelf. Here we go, making sure that coating is down. And look at this pretty piece with this, uh, with this pattern on it. So I'm gonna test it and make sure that I have the coating down. Okay, that's the coated side. That's the coating down. So I'm going to cut it with the coating down. Now, if you had mosaic nippers, you could use that for these too. But when you use the mosaic nippers, the glass tends to kind of flip as it falls away from the nippers. And then you have to test each one of these little pieces to make sure the coating is down. 
And so the time you save using the nippers, you might lose in having to check each of these pieces. So I know the coating's down. I'm breaking them off, putting them on the shelf with that coating touching the shelf. And then what happens is the coating kind of balls up and the clear glass above it rounds out and creates a beautiful little water droplet that looks like it's being, you know, illuminated by the sun or illuminated internally that adds a beautiful flash and like a three-dimensional quality to your work. Now these are turning out to be kind of rectangles. So it'll be fun to see what they look like when they come out of the kiln. They might be more oval shape than round shape. All right, so I have a pretty full kiln shelf here. Let's go ahead and move this into the kiln. Okay, so I've got this kiln shelf pretty well loaded with these little tiny pieces of dichroic, all with the coating down, hopefully. And I'm gonna load this in the kiln so we can fire this to a full fuse temperature. So come on over here. All right, so we're gonna put this in here. Look at those little beauties. Make a couple of them there slid, so I'm gonna separate those. And we're gonna go ahead and close the kiln. I like to give everything a little bit of a blow and a kiss before I close it. So fire well, my little beauties. I will see you soon. All right, we're gonna close that up. And then over here, the kiln says it's at idle. So hit the button here, it says pro, that's fine. Uh, program number one. Uh, it has segment three. It's gonna be a rate of 300 degrees an hour to 1300. You can hold air for 40. And it's gonna go a rate of 500 degrees to 1465. That's our full fuse temperature. It's gonna hold air for 10 minutes. Then we're gonna go at a rate of 500 down to 960, our annealing temperature. We're gonna hold air for 40 minutes. And now it's asking if we're ready, and we are. So we hit it again. And it's on, and now we are firing. So real exciting, you know, lots gonna be happening in this kiln overnight. So let's wait till we can open it up and see what happens. Hey, so we're back in the studio after these little dichroic pieces fired overnight. So let's open the kiln and see what we have. Oh boy, look how beautiful these are. Can you see the little shimmer, how they look like little droplets of water that are illuminated from the inside? Let's go ahead and pull that out of the kiln. Look at the nice uniform shapes that we have. That has to do with cutting the squares, you know, kind of nice and small. The bigger the squares, the more um, abstract your shapes are. By cutting those nice little tiny squares, they're kind of a pain to cut, but you really get these nice uniform shapes. Oh my goodness, look how, it, how that, can you see that? It looks like they're spinning. Do you see that on the video? That's so cool. Wow, the natural light's coming in the big door here in the studio and these things are just coming to life. Wow, that's so fun. Now these uh, dichroic pieces, they tend to show up better on a dark glass. So I tend to use them on darker colors. Let's bring it over here, put it on my work table. And uh, I've got this little dark tub I'm going to just kind of wipe those off. Woo, look at that. Just kind of wipe them off into my hand. Oh, let's hope we don't drop any on the floor. Ooh, isn't that so pretty? Oh my goodness. It's so fun how little teeny tiny things can be so exciting. That's one of the great things about glass fusing. Gosh, you don't have to make anything big. You don't have to make anything elaborate. You can just come out in your studio and just cut itty bitty tiny little squares, fire them overnight, and have these beautiful little pieces to work with. Uh-oh, I just lost one on the floor. That's really pretty. Ooh, in all the different colors. There's gold, there's pink, there's blue, purple. Wow, see how, how brightly they shine on the dark background? That is so fun. So, I make these little dots, you know, every so often. If I have a little spare um, corner on a kiln shelf and firing something to a full fuse, I'll put some of these little squares on there to make the dots. Because you might as well use up that kiln space, right? And then, I love having these around the studio in just a little jar or a little tiny bag. And then I can just pull from that and add them to any project I want to at any time. So I want to show you a couple projects that Use, I use these little dots as accents. 
This is a vase. It's a dark purple, grape color, and the little dots, see how they, they show so beautifully on there. And so this project, the circle, is a piece of clear and a piece of purple on top. They're fired to a full fuse temperature. Then these little dots are fired to a full fuse temperature. And then I place them on top of that fused glass circle and tack fuse them in place so they retain this texture and the, um, you know, this three-dimensional quality here. Then the piece is slumped or actually draped over a stainless steel mold upside down. So these things are terrific. You know, it makes a, a very simple vase look very elegant and very unique. This piece over here is called On Cloud Nine, and it's made up with a whole bunch of little dots. So some of them are tiny, some of them are like kind of pebble size, big pebble size, or you know, little stones that you might find river rocks or whatever. But these little tiny dichroic pieces, I made them also in red, I made them in black. They really add a three-dimensional quality to this and a textural quality that the light just picks up beautifully and really makes this piece more lively than it would be otherwise. And then this project right here, this is a, a pretty green leaf with some lizards on it. And just for fun, I put these little dots on here to maybe represent little droplets of water or dew that would be on this plant, this leaf, in the morning when you go out and see it and you see these pretty little lizards on there. So there's a lot of opportunity to use these little dots lots of places. So I really recommend you make some of these in your studio. Now remember, dichroic coating down and use a variety of colors. Use a variety of textures and a variety of patterns. And you get all sorts of really cool little accent pieces that you can incorporate into your other pieces of art. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these cool little dots. I hope it's starting to inspire some ideas of your own. And uh, I've got other videos, please check those out. Check out my website, please like, subscribe, and follow. And if you have any comments or suggestions for how we can use these little dots for projects that I'm making that you would like to see, let me know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, wonderful to see you again. And check out my website where you can subscribe to my membership videos. And until next time, happy fusing.